In this video, we're going to talk about photosynthesis and respiration for uh, biology. Uh, photosynthesis and respiration are both extremely important uh, processes and mechanisms that happen in the cell. And although photosynthesis just happens in the plant cell, uh, respiration we see happen in both plant and animal cells. And they're really important to uh, creating and to using uh, energy. And that energy we call ATP. It's the form of energy that um, cells actually use. Imagine that you eat something, maybe a plant or if you eat another animal, you're taking in food energy. That energy um, is in the form of sugars and other molecules that your cells can't use. And so to change that into a usable form of energy, uh, respiration has to happen. So let's take a look at these two uh, in a little bit more detail here. The first is photosynthesis, and photosynthesis, as I said, happens in plants. Um, and it's the process of producing sugars in plants or in some bacteria. And really what's happening here is plants or these bacteria are taking in light, they're taking in water, carbon dioxide, and they're producing sugars from that. So they're basically taking very raw materials, uh, things that are widely found in our environment, and turning that into a usable form of sugar um, that they can use. It occurs in the chloroplast organelle in plants, and so this is... Uh, where um, photosynthesis is taking place. Uh, within the chloroplast organelles, there are s uh, small portions um, that are actually green in color. And so that's what produces or makes the, the green color we see in most plant leaves, um, is the pigment within those chloroplasts. And they're used to actually absorb uh, the light. Uh, the inputs, as I, as I shared, is, is carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide is being taken in by the plants. They use sunlight and they use water. And so carbon dioxide and water are providing the, um, the molecules or the atoms necessary to produce the sugar. The sunlight is providing the energy or kind of the spark that actually drives this whole process. And what it spits out or the products are sugar and oxygen. You've probably heard before uh, or in the past that uh, if rainforests are cut down or if trees are removed from the environment, there's going to be less oxygen. There's less oxygen available. And the reason behind that and the thought behind that is uh, plants are taking in carbon dioxide, which humans and, and most other organisms give off, and they take in that carbon dioxide and they're giving off or producing oxygen and the sugar. And we end up using both of those, oxygen to breathe and for respiration, and we need sugar. Um, we get a lot of our energy, a lot of our nutrients, a lot of our sugars from plants. Here's a nice uh, diagram that kind of outlines and shows us the process here. This is a little bit more complicated than what you're required to know. Um, but it does a nice job of showing kind of the overall process. And there's two different parts to that. There's the first part, which is the light reactions, and then the Calvin cycle. And in the light reactions, we have water going in, as well as sunlight. So water and sunlight go into uh, the first portion of this. And this is photosystem 1 and photosystem 2, um, electron transfer chain. And what this process produces, um, we'll see here in a minute, uh, the second input is carbon dioxide, and this is used during the Calvin cycle. And so things that we get out, put out, um, oxygen here uh, is a result of photosystem 1 and photosystem 2. And then as an end result, uh, we get sugars. And the, the chemical formula for glucose to sugar is C6H12O6. You'll need to, to know that formula, C6H12O6. And basically through all of these steps, we're converting and changing different um, uh, molecules um, to eventually get this sugar. Uh, a lot of this is recycled, as you can see here. NADPH is a molecule, molecule that's used during this process. It eventually gets recycled and used. That hydrogen comes off, and so we get an NADP, and that gets recycled through the process. ADP is uh, a form of ATP. Um, it's missing one phosphate, and that gets recycled and reused. So ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate. ADP is adenine diphosphate, so that means that this has two phosphates, triphosphate meaning three. So a lot of this is recycled, um, again, as is the oxygen and the carbon dioxide in uh, respiration as well. The equation, you'll need to know the equation uh, for photosynthesis. The inputs for photosynthesis are six water, den, wa uh, water molecules, excuse me, six water molecules. So this shows us that we have six water molecules. Water is H2O. And we have six carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is CO2. We have six of those molecules. We also need sunlight. And from that, we get some outputs. We get six oxygen. 
So O2 is oxygen, we get six of those. And we get one sugar molecule, that's C6H12O6. All of this right here is the formula for one sugar molecule. That's photosynthesis. Let's take a look at cellular respiration. Uh, again, this happens in both plants and animals, and it particularly happens in the mitochondria of these, organ uh, of these cells. And really, cellular respiration is the process of producing this energy that cells need, and that is ATP, adenosine triphosphate. And it occurs in all eukaryotic cells, both plant and animal cells, so it's not, um, it's not just found in animal cells, it's found in plant cells as well. And it occurs in the mitochondria. This is an image, a nice image here of a mitochondria. And the inputs for cellular respiration include sugar and oxygen, and the outputs include water, ATP, and carbon dioxide. In just a minute when we get to the actual formula, you'll see and probably notice that it's almost the, just totally flip-flopped or opposite of photosynthesis. So when you're going to try to memorize these equations, if you memorize one, you can, if you memorize photosynthesis, for example, uh, if you remember that it's cellular respiration is almost just the complete opposite of that or flip-flop to that. And so again, these products and these molecules are really just being recycled between plants and organisms that are uh, taking in that oxygen uh, to produce ATP. Here's a nice diagram of, of uh, the process here and showing us the process. And again, this one's a little bit more complex than what we need to know. But basically, we begin this process with sugar. And that sugar gets turned into through glycolysis, uh, something called pyruvate. And this is the um, uh, one of the portions that goes through the cycle. Uh, the Krebs cycle is the cycle that's used in this process. And uh, the, the primary purpose of all of this is to produce ATP. And we get a little bit of ATP produced during uh, this initial steps uh, and stage of, of glycolysis. We get a little bit here during the Krebs cycle. And we get the majority of our ATP through this, this mechanism called the electron transport chain. Uh, transport system, excuse me. And really what's happening here is uh, molecules are moving against or across the uh, membrane of the mitochondria and it forces AT, uh, ADP to become ATP. And um, we'll, we'll talk about diffusion and, and movement across the membranes uh, in one of our next units. Um, but overall what you need to know is that we're inputting sugar. Um, we are inputting oxygen, so oxygen goes in, carbon dioxide comes out, and water also comes out. So water and carbon dioxide are two products, um, as well as ATP, sugar and oxygen are inputs. So let's take a look at the equation for cellular respiration here. Our inputs, six oxygen, uh, uh, one sugar, C6H12O6. Our outputs, we get six water, six CO2, and 38 ATP. This is the end result, and this is why cellular respiration is so important, is because our cells need that ATP in order to function. That's the energy or kind of the currency uh, which allows cells to do work. If we were to compare the two of these, um, we can do a nice quick comparison here with a, a nice table, or you could do it with a Venn diagram as well. Uh, photosynthesis occurs in the chloroplast. Cellular respiration is in the mitochondria. For photosynthesis, the reactants, or what's going in, our CO2, H2O, and water. Oh, this is supposed to be sunlight. I'm sorry, this is supposed to be sunlight here. This is water. Uh, for cellular respiration, we have a sugar and we have an oxygen. Our chemical reactions that occur, uh, the Calvin cycle in the stroma of the chloroplast and the Krebs cycle in the matrix of the mitochondria. For the exceeds proficiency portion, you'll need to know and be able to distinguish between this right here. The Calvin cycle for the photosynthesis and Krebs cycle for, for cellular respiration. Our products uh, for photosynthesis is one sugar, C6H12O6, that's glucose, and oxygen, O2. And for cellular respiration, we get CO2, H2O, and 38 ATP. Those are our overall products. So that's photosynthesis and respiration. Um, this is the level that you'll need to know it for our class. Uh, we'll get some more practice with this in class, and you'll get to actually create some diagrams to kind of help um, remember this as well.